Hello and welcome to a special YouTube edition of Amateur Radio Video News. I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ, and we're here because of a promise I made in the article that I wrote in the September QST, reviewing the ICOM 9280 handheld, to make a little video showing how to program radios for D-Star operation. We're going to take a look at the ICOM 2820 that I've got installed here in my car, the 92AD handheld that I've got installed here in my hand, and the ID800 that I use as a base station, so it's just kind of sitting here loose. There are some other ICOM radios that do D-Star, and if you've got one of those, they're pretty similar to these in terms of programming, but they all have their own little quirks, so I'm afraid you're going to have to discover some of those quirks on your own. Most of what we're going to do is enter call signs into four special fields in the radio. You'll see them in this display. There's your, currently loaded with CQ, 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 RPT1, RPT2, and my, with my call sign, KN4AQ. D-Star uses call signs in these fields the way analog radios use CTCSS tones and touch tone to access repeaters and route signals through linked repeater systems. Many D-Star repeaters worldwide are linked together through the internet. The linking connection is made by a computer at the repeater that's running gateway software. We'll see how to use the gateway and links in a couple of minutes, but let's do first things first. I'm going to start with local operation through a local D-Star repeater. And so the first thing I need to do is program the My Call field. I'm going to do that first on the 2820. The 2820 is a dual band, dual display mobile radio. But to keep things simple, I have it set for single band display. I've already selected my operating frequency, and I'm in digital voice mode. Now, we need to get to the menu for programming My Call Sign into the My Call field. I'll press the function key, which opens up a row of menus across the bottom of the display. If I push the function key again, I get a new set of menus. There are three sets of menus total, and I'll step through them until I get to the set that has the call sign stuff in it. I'll push this key, labeled CS, for call sign, and the whole display changes to show the call sign menu. The 2820's big display lets us see all four fields at once, and that's nice. I choose the field I want to work with by rotating one of the big knobs labeled Main Band. I can use either knob. I'll dial down to the My field and press the Main Band knob to enter that field. The radio can store up to six call signs in My Call. I'll enter the first position by pressing the Main Band knob again. And now, as I rotate the knob, I start running through the alphabet for the first character position. I'm going to enter my call sign, KN4AQ, so I'll stop on K. I'll push the button under the right arrow icon and step to the second call sign character position and dial up to N. And step over again. To put in my 4, I need to press this 1, 2, slash key and dial in my 4, and so on, to complete my call sign. There are 8 positions in the call sign field. Most call signs are six characters long. Don't be tempted to put in any extra characters here. It'll mess things up down the road. You can add some extra identification in four characters that follow the pre-programmed slash. Names are common, or four-character abbreviations of them. I'm fortunate enough to have a four-character name, so I'll enter Gary. I've finished, so I'll hit the back key once to see that everything is correct. Then again, to get back to the main call sign menu and see what I've entered in the My Call field. Notice that there is no Enter or Finish key. Once you've entered or changed a character, it's in there. Just press the Back button to step back through the menus, or press the Function key to get back to the main display. We're going to skip the Your Call field for the moment. For most local operation, that's just CQ, CQ, CQ. And we'll move on to the RPT1 and RPT2 fields. Again, push the Function button once, twice, push the CS button, that's call sign, and dial to RPT1. RPT1 holds the call sign for the repeater that I'm going to talk through. We're in Charlotte, so I'll enter KI4WXS. To do that, I push the main band knob, and notice that there are 60 memory positions for repeater call signs. I'll select R01 
That way the call sign I enter sticks in memory. I press the main band knob again and enter KI4WXS. I'll skip the seventh position and enter a B in the eighth position. That B means I'm using a 440 megahertz repeater. A two meter repeater would have a C and a 1200 megahertz repeater would have an A. RPT2 gets the same call sign, KI4WXS, but the eighth character gets a G for gateway. I can select the KI4WXS we've already programmed in R01, it automatically pops into R02, and press this button marked GW. That's a shortcut for making this field a gateway. I'm doing this now, even though I'm not planning to use the gateway yet, so that I can talk to dongle users. No, I didn't just make this video X-rated, so please don't report me to YouTube. The DV dongle is this little blue piece of plastic that lets you talk through D-Star repeaters using your computer and the internet. But DV dongle users can only hear stations that have the gateway programmed in RPT2. So now everybody's doing that. There's a shortcut for filling in the RPT1 field over the air. If you key up a D-Star repeater with that field blank in your radio, the repeater will send its call sign back to you and fill it in automatically. You won't be repeated on that first transmission, but you'll hear a double beep to indicate that it worked. And now I've got all four call sign fields programmed, and I'm ready to use the repeater. KN4AQ listening through D-Star in Charlotte. KN4AQ, KN4AQ, this is AA40S portable. Uh, you're loud and clear into the repeater. It's time to look at networking. To route my transmission to another repeater, I need to put something besides CQ, CQ, CQ in the Your Call field. I have two options. First, I can put the call sign of another repeater. A good place to find those repeaters is the website dstarusers.org. I'll choose KI4 PPF port C in Huntsville, Alabama. When I go in to program the Your Call field, again, I have 60 memory positions for individual call signs. And if I dial beyond that, I see the 60 slots for repeater calls. I'm going to manually program slash KI4PPFC. The slash before the call sign indicates that I want to route to a repeater. And that fills up the eight character field. Now when I transmit, the local repeater's gateway will route my signal to Huntsville over the internet and the gateway there will route me to its two meter repeater. The repeaters aren't linked. This routing is done every time I transmit. D-Star repeaters can be linked, but that's a different process that I'll talk about in a minute. Let's see if anybody's there. CQ Huntsville, this is KN4AQ on Charlotte KI4WXS Port B. The other way to talk through a distant repeater is to enter an individual hams call sign in the your field. D-Star repeaters maintain lists of everyone who's keyed them up recently, and they share the list with every other repeater on the network. You can see a version of that list on dstarusers.org. So as I key up with W4OZK in the your field, that's Greg Surratt, he's also in Huntsville. The repeater here in Charlotte checks the list to see where Greg was last heard and routes me to that repeater. Yeah, we had a great ham fest in Huntsville. Too bad you couldn't uh, make it down to uh, enjoy it with us. Uh, KN4AQ, W4OZK, Charlotte, Huntsville. Greg Surratt, Charlotte, Huntsville. Greg Surratt, Charlotte, Huntsville. Putting another station's call sign into the Your Call field of your radio lets you open up their receiver when they're using something called Call Sign Squelch. Call sign squelch is a very individual form of tone squelch, unique to D-Star. With call sign squelch, you'll only hear another station calling if they have your call sign programmed into the your call field of their radio. Now, I've got my ICOM 2820 set for call sign squelch, but my 92AD only has CQ, CQ, CQ in the your call field. Testing one, two. See, nothing. But now I'll put KN4AQ into my Your Call field. If I can remember how to do it. There we go. Testing one, two, KN4AQ, and it and comes, it comes through. through. This works through repeaters, the gateway, networks, every place.